Hello and welcome back to Start Learning Sets. And as always, I want to thank all the nice people that support this channel on Steady or PayPal. Today in part 5, we will continue talking about maps. In particular, we talk about images and pre-images. Please recall, we define the map as a special relation between two sets and we can write it as an assignment from A into B. Here we call A the domain of the map F and B the codomain. Okay, so let's look again at an example. Here the map f should map the natural numbers into the integers. And the map is defined by saying that the natural number x should be sent to x squared. So here you see this arrow is what we use for the elements and this arrow is what we use for the sets. Or in other words, the second line here is simply a new notation we use for fx is equal to x squared. Now, as we have done it in the last video, let's look at the visualization of this particular map here. So here we have the natural numbers on the left hand side and the integers on the right hand side. And now we can draw our arrows, for example 2 is mapped to 4. Here you see the limits of such a visualization. We can't draw all the arrows simply because we have infinitely many of them. However, it still can help us. For example, we see here immediately that we don't hit all the points in the codomain. Therefore, it makes sense to introduce a new set that consists of all the elements we actually hit. And this is what we call the range of the map. The common notation one uses for this is just given by shortening range and putting in the corresponding function f. Now we need to describe all the elements we actually hit. So we say it's the set of all the elements y in the set b, so on the right hand side, that satisfy that we find an element x on the left hand side that is sent to this element. Or to put this into a formula, we would write there exists an x in A such that f of x is equal to this y. Now you already know a lot of mathematicians like to shorten formulas, so they will just write the set of all f of x that satisfy that x is an A. You need to get used to something like this because in this notation everything is mixed up. However, maybe it's easily readable because it says you have a set consisting of elements of this form where x goes through the whole set A. And in the case that you don't find it readable, you can always translate it back to the thing it actually means. Okay, by knowing this, I think you are ready for the next example. Here, the function f should be defined on the Cartesian product of r with itself. And the codomain should be just the real numbers r. This means that our input on the left hand side can be written as a pair x1, x2. And then we send it to the right hand side where we have a real number given as x1 squared plus x2 squared. In this example I want to take the real numbers because they can be visualized with the whole number line. Of course we didn't define the real numbers yet, but we will do this later. Therefore, if you don't know the real numbers yet, it's not a problem. You can just revisit this example later. However, still you can take the visualization because the real numbers are just this one dimensional number line. Hence, on the other hand, we can see r times r as this two dimensional plane. Now, if we fix one point in this plane, we have an element in the domain and then we map it to the right hand side by using this formula. However, you might already see that this formula is connected to the Pythagorean theorem. So this pair here is mapped to a number that is greater than zero. It could also be zero, but only if we have chosen the origin here on the left hand side. In addition, we also know that this whole circle here is mapped to the same number here. Indeed, the radius squared gives us exactly this number. So our conclusion is different radii give us different numbers here on the right hand side, therefore the whole range would be this half line. More concretely we would write it's the set of all real numbers y that are greater or equal than zero. Okay, I think that's good enough for this example. As I said, we will talk about the real numbers a lot later. But first we have to talk more about maps, in particular about images and pre-images. We still have the same picture in mind, a map f goes from a set A into a set B. Now we already know the range of f are all the points in B that we hit with f.
However, we can formulate a more detailed question and ask what are the points that we hit with a given set of points on the left hand side. So let's call this subset in A, A tilde. And the subset we hit on the right hand side is what we call the image of A tilde. The notation one uses for this subset is F of A tilde. Okay, with this picture in mind, we can formulate the correct definition. So for a subset A tilde, the image of A tilde under F is the following set. The collection of all the points Y in B that satisfy that there exists an X in A tilde such that F of X is Y. Now it might not surprise you that we can also here use the short formulation of this set. So all elements Fx for X in A tilde. And when you see this, it makes sense that we use f of a tilde for the whole set. However, I use brackets here to remind you that we have a whole set here and not just an element. But sadly, often also parentheses are used in this notation here. Since this can lead to some confusion, I will totally avoid that and just use the brackets here. Okay, with all this, you now know what an image is. Now for the pre-image, we have to go the other way around, so we start with a subset in the set B. Therefore it looks like the same picture, but now we fix a set B tilde on the right hand side. And then we go to the left hand side and look which possible inputs are mapped into this set B tilde. And all these inputs together form a subset in A we call the pre-image of B tilde. At this point I don't think we have any problems writing down the formal definition of the set, so let's do it. We can say it's a set of all elements x in the left hand side, so in A, that satisfy that f of x is then an element of B tilde. Simply as that, take all the elements that lie after the map f acted in our chosen set. Now since we go from the right hand side to the left hand side, the symbol one has chosen for this is f to the power minus 1 of b tilde. Also here I will use the brackets to remind you that the input here is a set and not an element. However, in the same way as before, a lot of people will use parentheses there. Ok, this new symbol is now called the pre-image of b tilde under f. Now before we go to an example, I should alert you to some confusion that might occur here. This power minus 1 does not imply that we have an inverse map. We will talk about this later. The power minus 1 is just a reminder that the input set lies on the right hand side. Ok, now as promised, let's finish the video with some example. Let's take the function f, where the domain is given by the natural numbers and the codomain by the integers. Then we define the natural number x should be mapped to 0 if x is even and to x itself if x is odd. Ok, now we want to calculate the image of the set 2, 3, 4 under f and the pre-image of the set that only contains 0 under f. Maybe that's a good thing you can do for yourself, so pause the video and think about it. Ok, if you're ready, let's talk about the image first. With the first element 2, we will hit 0 because 2 is even. But then with 3, we will hit 3 itself because 3 is odd. Then in the end, with the element 4, we will hit 0 again, therefore the image set is finished. Ok, very good, let's go then to the pre-image. The question here is, which elements are sent to 0? From before we already know this happens for 2 and 4, but by definition we also know it happens for 6, 8 and so on. Hence this means that the pre-image here is just given by the even natural numbers. Ok, so if you have any questions, please use the comments and you can also use the PDF version that is linked in the description. And with this, I hope I see you in the next video and have a nice day. Bye!